to just finish this panel, which I, yeah. I hope you also found very interesting, over two hours here at the Blavatnik School, uh, organized jointly with the Natural Resource Governance Institute, and our, and our GI, where we discuss so many different issues with key members, very senior uh, executives from oil companies and mining companies, including the, the president of the main mining com company of Chile, Codelco, and other senior executives from Shell, Exxon, and, and others. And one of the issues that came up among many uh, was the experience of Ghana, which is uh, your country, and about the importance of, of uh, doing it right in terms of managing natural resources. Everybody knows that Ghana has done many things right over the past decade or so, and it's one of the examples in, in Africa and elsewhere that uh, things can be done, reforms can take place, but in the past year or two, there have been some clouds in the horizons and some challenges, as you yourself mentioned in a comment and in the discussion with the panelists. You even mentioned the concept that we fast-tracked the development of oil too much and so on. So it would be very interesting to hear about what were the main challenges, why, uh, what didn't go right, and now uh, Ghana is facing a well, serious macroeconomic challenge. Yeah, in terms of the macroeconomic um, challenge, this is not the first time. Unfortunately, we are still too dependent on export products that are cycles. So cyclically, we run into these problems now and then. Um, for example, we're a major exporter of gold. Gold prices have been um, at their lowest for a long while. Cocoa, which is our second major export, also dipped for a long while. Meanwhile, we had an election here. And unfortunately for us, and historically, in every election year, uh, expenditure goes up. And so when it coincides with the downward drift of your major exports, that creates its own problems. And um, last year, again, oil, we had, a, we had a problem with our oil field. We had to do reacidation and all the other things to bring up production. And so we also lost production for a while. I believe the accumulation of all this um, has left us with a sort of fiscal crisis, uh, which I prefer to call a challenge because we believe we will be able to come out of it. Uh, we've had to go to the bank, but the difference this time is that we went to the bank with our program. Um, so what we needed from the bank more was an imprimatur of um, acceptability. You mean like the International Monetary Fund? Yes. The IMF for, 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 for the bank. So, so you're confident that there will be a program and there is the political consensus to resolve the, yeah, the, the, yeah, and the address the situation. Yeah, there is there is a consensus to address the situation. And we believe we are capable of doing it. But more importantly, the appropriate lessons will be learned. More more generally, uh, we are involved you you are the expert on Ghana, obviously. So I'm not going to pretend uh, to speak too much about Ghana, but we're involved in many countries which are very rich in resources, but we have we have challenges in managing and, and governing them. And that's why there are serious issues of governance. There are serious issues of many of these countries also with, with corruption. And therefore, it's very important to work together. And one of the main messages that came out from this very interesting panel is the notion of multi-stakeholder, not only talking to each other, but getting together um, the corporate sector, the key factions of government, parliament, which you belong to, and civil society, and finding ways in a collective action fashion to move forward on very difficult issues in natural resources. And that's what we do in many countries. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's uh, not only hard work, but sometimes there's insufficient recognition of the magnitude of the challenge. And one paints too much of a rosy picture as to what's happening in the in the country. So it was very interesting that you brought up the case of of Ghana, even though everybody knows that Ghana until recently had done many things uh, uh, quite right. But we find that in terms of 
when we do assessments of governance and so on, the reality is still in many resource-rich countries is very, very challenging. There's much more that needs to be done, which is one of the great strengths of getting all together in this course here and working together. Well, for Ghana, particularly in oil and gas, I believe we're on the right track. Um, the, the mistake I believe we made was fast-tracking the development of the discovery. Um, oil was discovered in 2007. By the end of 2010, we were in production, which they say is a world record. But any fast-tracking will also involve short-circuiting some processes. And I, that is what I will not recommend to any other country. Uh, of course, we were unfortunate to have a small developer, uh, as the operator Talo, a very small company then, um, that needed the revenue stream as fast as yesterday. And then um, a Ghanaian state that also needed revenue. So the combination, but having said that, we have some of the best transparency laws in um, oil revenue in the world. We passed the uh, Petroleum Revenue Management Act, and a number of countries have since then come to us to see how um, we've done it. We also have a Public Interest Accountability Committee established by law that brings in civil society and other players. So in terms of the management of the revenue and the transparency side, we have scored very high marks. What we need to do is to stop dissipating the revenue on too many projects and concentrate the revenue on, say, three, four projects Projects that will be impactful, that can serve as a growth pool, and that is what the next phase of what we need to do. And in fact, there is even a broader lesson on the very insightful remarks you just had, uh, which is to look very rigorously and very comprehensively into the whole decision making chain, starting from exploration, but all the way to the revenue stream, the fiscal regime, revenue management, and then how development expenditures take place. That's why the charter, the natural resource charter, is a very powerful tool. Because you just said, in essence, <clears throat> that transparency, where you have had major gains and reforms and success, disclosure, is extremely important. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. It has to be translated into accountability. Then the revenues have to come and then they have to be well managed, which is where the weak link was. Yeah, but my major concern with the transparency agenda is that it seems to be one-sided. The tr transparency and accountability is almost exclusively on national governments. But we have a major issue with the cost, cost components of production. It's so difficult from get... Company. Yes, from the companies. It's so difficult getting accurate figures from companies. And therefore, I believe civil society led by international NGOs or international development think tanks such as yours should also put, begin to put pressure on IOCs to fully disclose costs. In fact, I'm glad you're saying it very frankly. It's something that we are also working on. The whole issue of cost structure the whole issue of creating the whole full account in terms of hydrocarbons is extremely important for us. You also said, however, that there is a responsibility on the government and on the state side, as you said, because a revenue management problem and the macroeconomic crisis cannot be mostly attributed to the behavior no. of the company. No, no. Uh, we, we must take responsibility, and I all for African states. I will even move beyond governments to the states. Governments are temporary, and the state is permanent. For African states, taking responsibility and setting the ground rules for natural resource management. As you know, I'm from Chile, and we believe in the same thing. Also come from the south, yes. even if it's far apart. Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine.